It's been almost a year ever since the Tinibu administration got into power and quite a number of people have a lot to say about that. Where we're seeing that the president as well have said that the ministers starting from today will have to present their scorecard of what they were able to do in their ministry for the past one year. And that will be starting from today running down till the 29th of May where we will be analyzing to see if we have benefited from this administration. Good afternoon and welcome to Nigeria Now, where we look at all the issues, or possibly some of the present issues that are happening currently in the country. I am Sarah Elisha Dasham, and I will be doing the program with Rachel Pazzi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sarah. I'm fine, how about you? Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we shall go straight into looking at the Tinibu's ministers to present their first year scorecard. And just like I said from my opening, the fact that it's almost a year already. Yes. Time passes without people really knowing that it's passing. And, you know, a number of people have a lot to say. A lot. A lot, a lot, yes. The past <laughs> one year have been a roller coaster for a number of people. To, if you are going to look at it from business owners, investors, citizens of the country, even the, media, the president himself have a lot to say concerning that and that is why we're here we're seeing that um yesterday during a press briefing from the minister of information he said that um just to analyze the one year they've been in the office we're seeing that i mean they have already scored the president of pass and as well we're also seeing the president's apologizing for the hardship mm -hmm. i think we've heard this please endure please endure from we've last heard year that down to whole year, year <laughs> Gary, please endure please endure and that has been the watchword in fact we've even seen where even um, the children of the president were actually coming as well to join Help, their father yeah. and telling Nigerians that, you know what, please, you have to endure. The policies may not look favorable, but it's for the, for the good at the long run. And we saw that, in fact, there's even a citizen delivery tracker app that Nigerians are as well to go there and see mm -hmm. if what their ministers have done is okay. And then they can actually also add up to their voice to say, yes, they did wrong. But I'm not going to say that this administration has been totally bad, Richard, because we know that um, there's always the good, the bad, and the ugly in any administration. We can go back from where we started the civilian um, rule of um, government from 1999. So that's like about 26 years or so, or 25 years. Yes, 25 since, years. Yeah, 25 years, ever since we started um, um, enjoying this um, democracy. And then a number of people have quite a lot to say. But I would like to dissect it, mm -hmm. looking at our security, mm -hmm. education, transport, um, entertainment as well, sport. Let's just mention quite a number of sectors that really, really need to be evaluated for the past one year. And then if we can truly say that, you know what, this past one year has been a jolly year, or this past year, have been a very terrible year for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Nigerians are at a better, better, better place to actually of course, judge yeah. this um, government if they have done their best or they haven't. Ms. Ella, we are in the better place of judging if the government have done their best. And we, we will see the federal government saying it's a pass. Sele, if you are the president of Nigeria and I'm employed under your administration directly, I can't come out and criticize you, not for anything, but because I am also part of the administration, okay? So I don't expect Vice President Shetima to come out and say, President Seller, you're doing bad. He's your vice. He can't tell you that. It means he's also a bad person. In fact, he's I don't, being employed. He, yes, exactly. You can't expect the Minister of Aviation, Kiyamu, to come and tell you, President Seller, you're doing terribly bad because I am under your um, uh, administration, employed by you. My job okay. is at stake True. and all of that. But you see, this is also where we can fault our system of governance, that politics and loyalty stands above governance but we can shift this aside and my point of bringing this narrative is to say nobody whatsoever under this administration is in the right position to score the president the people that can and are permitted and their judgment will be taken seriously is the people that are not under the president's payroll or 
the, their job is not at stake if they say otherwise concerning the, the, the president. And that is us, those who have voted him into power. If I should say Tinubu is a bad governor, bad president, my ministerial appointment is not at stake because I'm not a minister. I'm just a common Nigerian citizen and I should be at the best position to critique and say, okay, this is what the, um, the, the, the president is doing and it's not getting right. Now, whether we like it or not, certain policies will not be favorable. So like if you want to take drastic economic decisions, it comes with certain hardship. Now, we can start our score from there. What did you do about the hardship? Nothing. If something was done and I'm missing out here, let's know. Because we knew how labor had to keep pursuing wage award. And there's still arrears because it hasn't been paid for all the month. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What about pilates? Nothing. We just saw some few people receiving 25000 at the presidential villa, some few old people, and it stopped there. The 12 million houses that were supposed to be targeted to get certain palliative and relieve the poorest of the poor, nobody got anything. States were to get trucks of rice yes. and grains and extra billions to be able to give to nobody. It went quiet. Nothing has been done concerning easing the hardship. So that's also a fail right there. If we can talk about policies, of course, we have to take hard decisions sometimes. But at the detriment of your people, and then what are you doing to make sure that why they are having this patience to see that your policies will eventually, because some policies for sure are long term. While we are waiting this long term, what are you doing to ease that hardship? And whether we like it or not, the truth is the Tinibu's administration failed in providing any type of ease whatsoever for Nigerians. We can talk about our floating of the currency. Everybody knows that that is a very bad uh, 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 um, decision. Mm -hmm. It's very, very bad. But why are you so much of a stubborn administrator that you will not go back on it? You cannot take two policies at the same time that will be detrimental to the standard of living of your citizen when you know that these two things affect directly the lifestyle of your people. We're talking about subsidy removal That's and then the floating of the currency. True. And what this means is that regardless of whatever you give when it comes to money, be it minimum wage and all of that, mm -hmm. as long as we're seeing the inflation we are seeing now, even if we have a 200% increase on minimum wage, is as equal as us still being on the past minimum wage. Because what you could get for 30000 now, you're getting it at 100000 So even if your payment is being increased to 100000 you're still where you are yesterday. Because now you will still be able to get that thing at the 100000 not at the 30000 So what is the point of the increase? So we are still where we mm. are, whether we like it or not. Now let's go to education. And there's so much to talk about it, but can we talk about the one that is out there? It's $50 billion, for example, for student loan scheme. And we saw $90 billion given for Hajj subsidy. And you Priority. wonder... I don't want to talk about the many, many other things that are not balanced when it comes to education. But we can talk about that. How is subsidy for tourism higher than education, than loan for students when we know that that is poverty elevation? And this is where we keep talking about the administration not taking the things that will affect the life of its citizens directly, seriously. Mm -hmm. We can go to health. Japan didn't start with the Tinibu's administration. But the question is, what have the administration done in the span of one year to Stop. reduce? Nothing, Sele, nothing. What doctors are asking for have not been given. Nothing has been reviewed. Nothing has been said whatsoever about what will be the way forward moving mm -hmm. on for our health, stock, uh, uh, health, health sector and making sure doctors are not leaving. And then we can talk about security. Is there still kidnapping now there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we seeing more mistakes coming from the military, bombing um, innocent civilians and all of that? Yes, we are seeing that. Despite the numbers of record of people that have been able to be rescued from, um, from terrorist camp or be from being kidnapped, we still have more people going into it. And mm -hmm. the question is that 
what is it going to when is it going to stop has there been any major drastic change when it comes to security in this one year no it has just been a continuity of what have been happening in the society and then military being able to do what they can do what about employment seller we can talk about employment and it has increased within this one year it has increased because when we have multinationals that are Maybe. responsible mm. for over 5,000 employment in this country, when we have them folding and leaving, and these are the big ones we know, then it means we have 5,000 people that are back to being unemployed. And we can go on and on and on, looking at the key point indicators concerning what this scorecard will be. And the truth is that for this first one year, the Tinubu's administration scorecard is very low. And we have to wait another one year to see if it goes high or it remains where it is. Mm -mm. Richard, you know why I can't even wait for a year? Because I remember during the retreat that this administration held um, l um, 1st of November last year, the president made mention the fact that this assessment will take place quarterly. So that is to say that for every four months, we will be seeing an, a review yeah. whether or not they are doing well. Because we know that I think if the Tinubu administration has about four to seven ministers or so. So that is to yeah. say that we will be seeing, you know, assessment. So I'm hoping that we do not have to wait for a year mm -hmm. to see a scorecard. So we're in May. So I'm hoping that by July, August, yes. I should be seeing another scorecard yeah by december the end of the year i should be seeing another True. scorecard and i'm hoping that if only just like you rightly mentioned some few sectors that we've not really um given attention in fact you, you mentioned we can even talk about power that has been the we number one reason power, why yes. uh, multinationals are leaving yeah because if you if you cannot have power and then you're having that removal of fuel subsidy and then presently how much is a liter of fuel we can even talk about the inflation rate and then go to our exchange, which you already mentioned, floating of our currency. We can mention them over and over and over. And just like you said, I mean, it's just that we're taking a step forward and then take a step backward, yeah. and then Nigerians are just wondering, are we moving or are we still in the wilderness? Because we are not seeing any light we're at the end of the tunnel, yet. the way things are moving. Yeah. But just like I am hoping and trusting, because the essence of going through this one year is to see and just like I keep saying the fact that we are here, we are not by yet. Yeah. And that's why the media is always there to actually mm -hmm. spotlight areas that the government possibly they are not seeing to say that, you know what, things are not working well. We could talk about this farming season. We're still having the issue of farmers' head has clashed. We are having that, yes. Let's not even talk about those in Benway State that are complaining recently of them not being well kept in the IDPs. Mm. What is the government doing to make sure that all of those people in the various states are back to the ancestral land? What are they doing about not that? So we are not here to just castigate the government of and say, you not. know what, you've not <laughs> done anything in the past one year. Of course. We are seeing a number of projects going on. Roads are here, construction left, right and center, the president trying to woo investors into the country. But then cool. it as much <laughs> as you were doing that, mm. if we're going to put the good and then put the other we know what How it are is. We to weigh it? So yeah. I'm hoping that um, for us to be honest and transparent and accountable, we're holding our leaders accountable because yeah. that is the work of the citizens. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. Let us see what the ministers will score themselves. And then let us see what Nigerians will score them. See. Because, I, I mean, Sela, you just made mention something very important. Yes, this Tinibu's administration have a very high number of ministers. But we know that we barely see 10 making the headlines doing something. Mm. And you just, you just can't help but wonder because this is also something that kind of struck my attention. Because I know we see aviation, we see information, we see solid mineral, we see power minister talking, we see, um, we see um, defense. We even we, saw the minister of women, you know, women, trying to you just know, say trying a little. To. Mm. And then if we count this number, there are barely 15 actively trying to do one or two things or the other that are trying to impact and then you wonder what are the rest up to so there are people that would even have zero on their scorecard because they obviously have not been doing wonder anything what, what wonder what is happening 
in their uh, in their ministry, M ministry mm. and all of that. And then we we uh, so like, I mean, um, the more we talk, I'm trying to think about the good because see, so like, despite going to get the the investors, it, it doesn't take investors investors so like, years to come to a country. You can't take a whole year win somebody. It it can take months and months of discussing business plans and mm -hmm. how to go. But the win, a whole year, when it comes to a business cycle, is too long. You might just as well say goodbye to it because when it comes to business, it, it moves really fast mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's profit so to be static. made, there's growth to be made. Mm -hmm. there, it, it's just a growth process that doesn't sit down and lie down for that long. So the question is, what investors have our president be wooing that we are yet to see them coming and setting up and starting up and all of that. <gasps> Honestly, I, I'm happy, right, that this is not four years later. It's I'm happy year. it's just one year, Sele. And we have to just wait and see. That is just the bright side for mm -hmm. this administration mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. me so far, mm -hmm. that we, we, we have to see these long-term policies what will they be mm. and well eventually if the kind of investors he's wooing they need the whole four years let's hope that by the time he's leaving the office we will see bigger and better multinationals coming into nigeria mm. uh, that's when of course we, we we are nigerians and we want the best for this country we cannot hide what the president is doing mm. if he's doing because it the there, works will be out there to speak for themselves that's you? simple seller. so i'm yeah. hoping beyond our ministers mm -hmm. which will also have a scorecard coming from our legislators yes yes i really need to know the bills they have passed that have impacted we nigeria need to, yeah i need to see a scorecard for our governors mm -hmm. as well yes we saw where fubara is saying that he's Started governance just February, Richard. And it's true spent a to some whole extent. one year fighting. Yes. Well, let's just keep our fingers crossed we on will. that. Now, still talking about governance, here we're seeing that INEC is taxing um, the state um, independent electoral commission towards a credible local government election. We will recall that recently um, there have been an um, issue coming from Senate mm -hmm. where they are asking, you know, the president concerning governors that have been interfering with the issue of local government autonomy yeah. in their state. And I think another thing is the fact that governors have been interfering with local government elections. Yeah. We've known of governors that for the past four years they have been in office. There have been no local government election. Rather, we've been having caretakers taking care of that. And I think there is a need for local government elections. And that is why here we're seeing that, you know what, the chairman of INEC talking about mm. Yakubu Mamun is saying the fact that you know what, let the state independent electoral commission do their work. Yeah. Because yeah, we sure. see whereby governors just more like elect favorable people to actually mm -hmm. serve. And we then after that they don't even have a permanent office after the election is done, they are being dissolved. Mm. So you cannot really, you know, point the finger. Things are not transparent, things are cloudy. No one that we see for every most time when we look at government election, we see that people are being killed. Let us even use typically that of Plato State. Yes. It gets to a particular local government that once it's an election, they have to be blood. And so you wonder what is really happening. So I'm hoping that with this coming from INEC, I mean, taxing this state um, electoral commission, um, electoral commission, yeah, they will be able to do their job. Governors will not interfere whatsoever mm. because we've seen governors really, really interfering when it comes to local government elections in their state. So I am hoping that, you know what, governors will fold their arms, let this, the SEC do their work because that is what they are started to do. Yeah. And then they will not interfere in appointments and all of that eventually. I believe that this is the start of local government autonomy mm. when we are able to see that there's a free fair election at the local government level without the interference of governors then this is the start mm -hmm. of local government autonomy because we are seeing how um, recently our lawmakers started saying of course they can't be giving funds to caretakers they mm -hmm. can't work with caretakers and all of that and it's understood there needs to be a chairman at that local government the real head of the local government as by constitution, mm -hmm. the Nigerian law, mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to move from that. And um, this is something that I believe that when it comes to building Nigeria, this is where 
electorate can be in control like this is where it affects you directly, directly. it affects us directly and and by that it means we should go out at your local government area don't don't joke with this election so that there can't be autonomy in the sense that let it not just be ruled by a few people go out there and vote for who you want to be your local government chairman so that starting from the local government level to the state and the federal government who we'll have the people's voice speaking at every mm. level what that means is that you will be able to question because you put that person in power when you do not put a person in power you cannot question he's answerable to who puts him in power and that is where we see we keep talking about how the governors keep um controlling because they put who they want there for certain reasons but by the time that it is the people who put this person in power there will be checks and but it doesn't have to be from the necessary and, and the necessary authority but from the people themselves being able to say okay we've put you because we've seen your capacity and this is what we, we hope you bring to our local government mm -hmm. and all eyes will be on that person and eventually there'll be development so like, honestly i have so much hope for our local government and i believe that this is the start so yes let the state uh, independent electoral commission come true for every state let them come true for nigerians let them come true for every state mm -hmm. they can't be independent if they allow it i don't want the repeat of INEC at the general um, election like, level honestly, and all of yeah. that this mm -hmm. is this is small in, in the sense that it's not as big as the general poll. And what that means is that I'm not saying it doesn't have influence or I'm not belittling the fact that it could be influenced. It's politics we're talking about here, mm. but it is still at the level where the right thing could be done with so much ease than at the higher level. So I'm looking at um, it playing out like that and then it will be a start of us in development at the local government areas. Mm -hmm. You're very true. Just like you said, this is the one that is directly affecting the people. Mm -hmm. And truly, just like you said, I'm also seeing the light that if we are able to conduct this local government election mm -hmm. successfully, Rachel, yeah. I believe that we'll be able to have this total autonomy, independent, where the local government can take certain decision. Yeah. So if I'm living in a particular local government, I see that certain things are not working well. I know where the local government chairman's office is. Exactly. If I cannot get direct influence to the chairman, I'll start with my council, my council at the one yeah. level. Yes. This is where it's not going well, and I need you to channel it. At least you know somebody you can point a finger that is not doing his work. But right now, yeah. you don't even know who to pour the blame on. Of when course certain not. things yeah. are wrong, you're transforming your local government, the roads, you don't even know who Ooh. to talk to yeah. because you even hardly have um, direct um, access to even the House of Assembly, those representing you in your constituency. Mm. So I am hoping that we begin to see something effectively. Yeah. So our fingers are crossed. We hope yes, to see yeah. elections coming up. So governors, please need to start doing something to okay. set up committees. Let yes. us have local government elections at the local level. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. For You're welcome, with me. And also thank you to our viewers. Thank you to our supporters for making it out to watch Nigeria now. So we'll meet again tomorrow. Do have a great day. Thank you.